it's FA Cup day here in Swansea and uh, right behind me here is the wall of the prison in Swansea and of course these days the Liberty Stadium is the venue for Swansea's home games but there was a time and I've been here before many times actually to watch City at Vetch Field and I, I remember it being near the prison so I looked it up and across the road there you can still see the remnants of the entrances of some of the stands right near the prison of the old Vetch Field. I don't think there's much else left of it, but this is where Swansea used to play. This is the other side of the ground. You can actually see one of the old turnstiles there. And inside I think there is literally a field and maybe a little bit of rubble left and that's all there is of the old Vetch Field. So I'm stood now where the ground would have been. I remember doing a commentary from up a gantry over one of the terraces, which was a very steep perpendicular gantry entrance. And I remember to, having to carry my bag up there, which was quite precarious, but that's the prison behind. And I can just about hear, you probably won't be able to hear it on here, some shouting in what was presumably the exercise yard behind there. But we're now in the perimeter of where the ground used to be. Very different though these days. Obviously today I'm here because I'm a working journalist, I'm here for Sony Sports TV in India. But one of the great joys of coming down here to Swansea today is that normally the walk I do in the middle of a pandemic is around the streets and uh, the little country lanes near where I live, not near the seaside. So today I can take my constitutional walking along the beach which is such a, a difference from normal. One of the things hopefully we'll return to in the non too distant future uh, as the vaccine rolls out. Very lucky to be here today. It is a bit cold, but it does your soul good to be near the sea. Still, there's a game to come soon, very, uh, very soon. Hopefully City will do very well in it and progress to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. But for now, at least for the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to take my constitutional, as we say here, and get some fresh air near the sea. <sighs> Does the soul good. This isn't the normal press room, of course, or this is where the press conference will be later on this is a concourse but it gives more space for the journalists to do the work a little bit later on you might not recognize henry winter but it is henry winter from the times you've been to an awful lot of games do you ever get used to it uh, behind closed doors no i think i've done it's about 120 for me now in the last sort of whatever it is year no because it's this place should have, what would it be, so three, four thousand City fans would have come down. It'd be full of, um, you know, there were a few fans outside looking at Manchester City's bus coming in, but everyone's respecting social distancing. And, and you know what, it's, it's a pity, look, fair play to the players, because the intensity that the players have been playing. I mean, I was at Anfield last weekend, and you look at how they are performing without, you know, without supporters there. I mean, it's, it is a credit to their professionalism. But it's just, it just doesn't seem right. You know, you walk out of the ground and you just think, wow, if only... It's where Foden did his damage in the second half. The City fans would have been in the corner of the, of the Annie Road. And you just... You want, them, you want the fans to see those. So I don't feel guilty about going to games because it's, it's my job. But I get put it this way, I get lots of messages on social media for programmes and team seats and things like that. Because, you know, because fans, fans miss it. And I think if anything... If this pandemic, this horrific pandemic, has highlighted anything in football, is how important fans are. And when fans get back in next season, I, I can't see it before then, but next season, then the authorities, the Premier League, has got to understand it. They've, they've got to keep, so travelling fans who just get the home fans going off, 
they've got to keep the prices of tickets down. You know, the Premier League got all cocky because they said, oh, we got it to 30. It should be 20. 20 is plenty, as the, the Football Supporters Association say. And when you think about it, the atmosphere is created by the skill of the players, by the joy of Phil Foden in possession, by Bernardo Silva, by Ilkay Gundogan playing so well, by Ruben Diaz being a contender for, uh, for Footballer of the Year. You know, for Cancelo pushing into midfield or Carl Walker bombing down. Things. But you know, the players are the stars, but you need a backdrop. And if, and if I talk to um, overseas television journalists, as I'm sure you do, they say one of the things we love about it, as well as the football and the character of the coaches and the drama in the dugout, is the backdrop, it's the football fans, it's the history, it's the continuity from the down the years, the chance, the song, the rivalry, the tribalism. And it's the fans who create that, and that is invaluable. So all the money that comes in to the game goes to owners, goes to managers, goes to players and their agents. The fans should share in that as well, because the fans are part of the product, to use that horrible phrase, which broadcast is used. So I hope when football comes back properly, we all have a huge celebration. We cherish the memories of former players who passed away and and you know, there will be fans going back into grounds and they'll be able to see next to them because one of their loved ones has passed away, despite all the amazing work that the NHS has done. Um, I just think that let's appreciate fans more. So look, that's my rant. So if you ask me what going to all these games is like, I would absolutely love it if the traffic was absolute hell outside the ground. If I had to leave an hour earlier because I knew there were going to be loads of fans there, because that's what the game's about. It's about fans, it's about players. But you know, one of the great things about tonight, Apart from uh, Pep going strong, as he often does in the cup, no VAR. <laughs> no, I went, yeah, excellent. <laughs> I'm smiling underneath it. Well said, well said. Good rant. <laughs> Good rant, yeah. Just like at Cheltenham, uh, I have virtually a whole stand to myself here. So it is quite a, a lonely existence. And uh, I thought Henry there spoke a lot of sense and spoke on behalf of fans and speaking personally, the fact that there are no City fans over there just make, doesn't make this trip anything like the same. A four and a half hour journey down here on my own, four and a half hour journey back. I'd rather be travelling with people that I know, friends, journalists, colleagues, anything. And then when you get down here, you really don't mingle with anybody. Just that snatch conversation with Henry was all I've had, really. But there are the players down there. That's what we all love as supporters. A uh, very strong team picked by the manager today. And I would expect City to progress to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. Let's see what happens. Describe that first half as mesmerising. Watching City in the flesh when you can see the full picture is even more impressive than when you watch them on TV, as we have to do most of the time. Single out Rodri in that first half, his movement, his anticipation, his communication with, with Stefan in goal was so, so impressive. Um, earlier in his City career, I wasn't quite as impressive with him or impressed with him, but he's just getting better and better. So hats off to him. Really good first half, might only be one goal, but another first half of perfection by the Blues. Well, that was a pretty perfect performance from City. 3-1, another conceded one, which is unusual these days. The precision passing, the pressing, the, the movement is just amazing when you see it in the flesh. I just wish the City fans could be here in the stadium to see it at the moment. It's heartbreaking really, but we all know the reasons why. I feel very privileged to have seen it from this view, where you can see the whole pitch and you can see the contribution that every single player makes. The movement, the, the thought, the choice of pass. It's like watching the inside of a Swiss watch, all that precision movement. Really enjoyed that. City move on, of course, to the quarterfinals now. Hopefully I'll be able to go and report on that game for Sony TV India as well. But either way, City into the quarterfinals of the, of the FA Cup. And uh, although it's been cold, it's been a long journey and I've still got 
four and a half hours to drive back home again later on. I'm so glad and so lucky and privileged to have been here. I hope you've enjoyed a little bit of a behind the scenes here on this vlog. Thanks very much for watching. It's great being a blue, isn't it? <laughs>